Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash malicious compliance where people have conformed to the letter but not the spirit of a request. If you're new around here please do hit subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video but for now let's sit back relax and enjoy some malicious compliance. Lady tries to tell me it's too pricey, learns to keep her mouth shut in the end. This happened about a year ago. I was 17 and this was my first major job, selling fish at a fish store. Yes, we only sold fish, raw, smoked, fish beef and so on. Anyway, it's very well known locally and I got paid 12 euros an hour to work there, so heck yes. My boss was an older gentleman, I think he was 60 and he was the one fishing so he wasn't in the store that much. So he gave me free hands when it came to selling the fish. I could give discounts whenever I want. I could do buy two pay for one sales if we had a lot of something and so on. Well one Saturday there were surprisingly few customers. So in comes this lady and her husband. Let's call them OL for old lady and NM for nice man. And they start looking at what we are selling. We have some white fish, perch, salmon and some other fishies. They pick out what they want and I weigh it and tell them the price. Now, I like to give people discounts if the price is like 25, 17 euros. I take it down to 25, cause it's easier to count cause 90% of the customers paid with cash anyway. Well, she bought some salmon, I think it was about 2 something kilos, so the price was 37.67 and I thought, you know what, they've been quite nice to me, so I put it down to 35. Well, here is what happened next. 35? That's way too expensive. It would have been cheaper in the supermarket. Count it again. Mrs. I'm sorry you think that. However, our prices are better than the supermarket because we actually have better quality fish than they have. So our prices are quite fair. We sometimes sold our fish that we didn't sell on the weekend to bigger supermarkets because our pride was having fresh fish. So we didn't want the old fish anyway. BS! The nice man who realised what I actually did. Honey? The old lady ignores her husband. Count it again! I give her the retail worker smile we all know and love. Right away, missus. The nice man gives me a smile. The old lady looks proud of what she just did. Me, with a sarcastic voice. Oh, no, you were right. I counted it wrong. Now with a normal voice. That will be 37.67 euros. The old lady turns red out of embarrassment. Nice man, pay him. She snags the bag with the fish and walks out the door. The nice man pays. Thank you, have a nice day. You too. I later told my boss what happened and we had a good laugh about it. That's a funny story and all, but what is fish beef? I have never heard of that in my life. Can someone please tell me what that is? Want us to work 40 hours no matter what? Sure can, but make sure you do too. So this isn't my story, but my husband's. Here is the cast. H, husband, JB, jerk boss, CW, cool co-worker, and JBO, jerk boss's office mate. My husband is the king of malicious compliance. He will listen to a request and make sure to follow it, but sometimes not in the way intended. Husband worked an IT job that was a project-based company. Sometimes he would work 80 hours a week to complete projects and other weeks he would work closer to 30 hours if it was between project. Along with his co-worker. Jerk boss was promoted based on seniority and was on a power trip. He was the boss of two people only, my husband and his co-worker. He was a crappy worker, never showed up to work on time and would frequently leave early as well. Jerk boss never worked a 40 hour work week even when the projects were in happening. Co-worker and husband didn't really mind since he didn't know what he was doing. Jerk boss pulls husband and co-worker into another BS meeting. It has come to my attention that both of you are stealing from the company. The co-worker and my husband looking at each other confused. Neither knew what he was talking about. Time theft is a serious offence. I know both of you didn't pull the full 40 hours last week. 
Husband and I worked about 75 hours the week before due to the big project deadline. We thought since there was no urgent projects, we could take it easy this week. You are required to work 40 hours a week, no exceptions. Do you work 40 hours a week? I saw you leave at 3pm yesterday. Jerk boss got angry at husband's question. Of course I do. I got in at 4am yesterday, that is why I left so early. Now, if you don't comply, I will write you up, understood? Co-worker was angry, but my husband wasn't. He was scheming. For the next month, husband arrived early every day at 5am and said hi to jerk boss office mate. Jerk boss was never there when husband arrived. My husband would then tell jerk boss's office mate, would you let me know when he gets in? I got a question for him. Once the jerk boss arrives, he would walk over to husband's desk. Husband would see him, usually around 10am, and write down the time in a notebook. Big enough for jerk boss to see it with the title on the top of the page, jerk boss's hours. After my husband did this for a month, jerk boss was averaging about 25 hours a week by the way, jerk boss confronted him. Why are you recording my hours? You should not be concerned about that. I just want to keep the company honest. I am doing the same for CW, and wouldn't you know, he has made sure to do 40 hours each week. Even if you turn that into HR, it wouldn't matter, it's your word against mine. Not really, I call you at 5, 6, 7am on your work phone, company issued cell phone that never leaves work, every day. You never answer it since you aren't there. Your phone record, my log and several witnesses might make HR listen. Jerk boss was silent and then simply said, There is no reason to involve HR. We are fine the way we were before. We all do a little time theft. My husband smiles. Of course. Maybe we should just go back to the way it was. Agreed. Jerk boss would eventually get fired, but for drinking on the job about a year later. This guy is the king of malicious compliance. I think he needs to do some malicious compliance lessons. I'd definitely go to a couple. Don't like female servers? Okay. I used to work at a restaurant in an amusement park. It seemed like 70% of people turned into Karens and Chads the minute they stepped through the turnstiles. But maybe that was just my skewed perception of being in customer service. But anyways, we had this family come in one day and they were sat at a table that would have them served by one of the nicest, most capable waitresses we had. The dad would have none of it, saying he didn't want to be served by a female. He needed a male waiter because they do a better job. The waitress was a bit upset, took it kind of personally, and we had to all tell her how ridiculous it was that she would consider it to be true. Management caved and got him a different server, which I'm sure if they didn't, he wouldn't have tipped her anyways. But what I loved was seeing who management gave him as a server. The amusement park hires a lot of international workers. There were people from all over the world. The guy they put on his table to serve him was from Colombia. English was not his first language and he was a bit inexperienced as a server. The customer ended up getting the worst service because of his generalization and demand. To be clear, the worst experience wasn't because he was Colombian, but because he was new and not a native English speaker. The waiter was an awesome dude and did become an excellent server quickly. I'm really confused as to why this guy wanted a male instead of a female. Like, why? Was he James Charles or something? Want me to report each time I'm away from my desk? Okay. I have been working for my recently ex's company for a year and a half now. Within that time, I have worked autonomously at home without complaints from my line manager, colleagues or ex, the director of the company. Until yesterday, I went to make myself a hot drink, tea, and was uncontactable for less than 5 minutes. Suddenly, now, I have to report every time I'm away from my desk. I come in today and my line manager is missing in action, totally unresponsive. Oh, the irony. So. Who do I report my absence to now? So far this morning, having been in for one hour, I have phoned the director of the company five times, interrupting his work, giving the reasons like I am making a drink, 
I am going to the bathroom, I am getting a jumper, and I am having a cigarette break. I don't smoke. Let's see how long this rule lasts. I can just imagine this really, really important board direct meeting, and then this person calls up saying, Hi, hey, hey, yeah, um, I'm just standing up for a minute. Is that alright? I'm, ju I'm just standing up. Okay, thank you. Alright, see ya. Bye. <laughs> hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.